Hey guys, it's Coach Sharf. Welcome back to my videos on our notes. Today we are looking at operations with complex numbers. So we started learning about the imaginary number i, and then we started learning about complex numbers, how you can try to combine a, a real number and an imaginary number. So we're going to explore that a little deeper, and we're going to talk about how we could do some operations with those imaginary numbers. You can add, subtract, and multiply them. You can also divide them, but it's going to be a separate lesson. So when I have a complex number, all I'm doing is trying to combine or add real numbers and imaginary numbers. Okay, so if we're looking at the, the general form, okay, we have A plus BI. A represents the real part, BI represents the imaginary part, and there's some examples down there. Again, I'm gonna try to kind of power through this as quick as I can so it's not too long of a video. Uh, I'll tell you where you can kind of stop to, to get down your notes if you need to, okay? It's supposed to be E. So this is the real part. I know my handwriting is not the best if y'all hadn't figured that out by now. And this is the imaginary part. So again, y'all could freeze the video right here, pause it, just to make sure you got this whole slide down. All right. So the next slide, we're just gonna kind of quickly glance up at it. So it says try writing these complex numbers in the standard form A plus BI. So the idea with these is this one's flipped from how these first two are and this one's just gonna have an imaginary number by itself. But the idea with these is what we had previously learned about simplifying the square roots, you gotta simplify this, the square roots to turn it into a negative number, or not a negative number, excuse me, an imaginary number. And then you would have the complex number. Nine and five would be your real parts. Whatever imaginary number you turn those into, same thing down here, that would be your imaginary part. But again, we'll kind of skip over that. If, if you want me to show you, again, you can just send me a message and, and I'll show you. So operations on complex numbers. Complex numbers can be combined with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Again, we're just going to look at the first three today. So I'm gonna start with add. We have an example that looks like two regular binomials that, that y'all are used to seeing and they have the X, okay? Again, even though the X is, is second there and y'all are probably more used to seeing something like 4X minus two plus 3X plus four, it doesn't matter that it's kind of flipped in the reverse order, it's still fine, okay? So all we're gonna do it's the same thing I would do even when I had this, and that's combine like terms, okay? So I'm going to combine 2 and 4, which gives me 6. I'm going to combine negative 4. Remember, you got to take the negative with it. Negative 4x and positive 3x. Let me redo that so I got the plus. Positive 3x, negative 4 and positive 3 gives me negative 1x, okay? So you get 6 minus 1x. Also acceptable because this is probably how you're going to see it more on the test. When you have that coefficient of one, you don't really need it. So your answer really is six minus X. Technically they're both correct. But again, in a test situation, this is probably more what you're gonna see versus that. Again, here you can freeze frame this to make sure you got everything. Of course, you can stop anytime I'm explaining stuff as well. All right, so next slide. What y'all gonna see is I have the same two binomials, except all I did was where's my thing? There's, all I did was replace the X's with the I's. So this is a situation where again I told you that I does represent the square root of negative one. So it represents something, okay? It's not just a, a random variable, it does represent something but we're still gonna treat it like a variable in a lot of situations, including this. So all I'm gonna still do is the same thing, combine like terms. Okay, I've got two and four, which is six. And then again, negative four I, positive three I, would be negative one I, or again, just six minus I. 
So all I'm doing is combining like terms. Again, you can pause it here real quick to get this down. All right, so now we're moving to subtraction. So there's an extra step we gotta do at the beginning of subtraction before we can combine like terms. Okay, it's gotta do with this negative. Again, y'all probably learned it before, a lot of y'all is either keep flip change or keep change change, okay? So what I gotta do is really I gotta use this negative to change all these signs. We call it distributing the negative. Because essentially what I'm doing is this is really like a negative one. So I'm just multiplying both of those by negative one. That's, that's mathematically, technically what I'm doing, okay? So I'm gonna distribute the negative. So I gotta change both of these signs, okay? So this H is gonna change positive. Two X is gonna change the negative two X. And now that I've distributed it, this now turns to positive. Okay, so I've used it up, so it turns back to positive. So after you distribute your negative, which you have to do every time you are subtracting, okay? You got the complex numbers in parentheses, and you're subtracting everything after this subtraction sign, you gotta change the signs on the inside, okay? So now I could just do the same thing, combine like terms. Negative three and eight is five. There's no coefficient here, so it's, again, it's like there's an imaginary one. So I got positive one X, negative two X, okay, positive one X, negative two X, which would be negative one X. So five minus one X or just five minus X. And again, I'll pause for a few seconds. You can stop the video and get this down. All right, so next problem, we're doing the same thing we did with the addition. We're just replacing the X's with the I's with the imaginary number, but nothing else is changing. So again, the idea is showing you that the rules that you already know, again, combining like terms, distributing that negative, we still do the exact same things with these, okay? So I'm gonna distribute this negative here and here. This becomes eight minus two I. Again, this changes to plus, so I'm negative three plus I over here. And again, same idea, okay? It's like there's an imaginary one out here. So negative three and eight is five. One I minus two I is negative one I, or just five minus I. Again, you can pause it here to make sure that you got all this down. All right, now moving on to multiplying. So multiplying, again, with this one, you're probably more used to seeing it. I know I didn't show it on the subtraction problem. You're probably used to more seeing this like 2X plus three and 4X plus two, okay? I've just flipped it using the commutative property. So I still really have the same thing since everything's positive, all right? I just switched the order. But I'm still gonna do what I would do up here down here, which is multiply. And there's the two methods that I can use to multiply, okay? There's the FOIL method, and the box method. Again, I'm gonna do the box method because that's what I prefer. If you prefer the FOIL method and if you do it correctly, you'll still get the same answer. So I'm gonna draw my box. Again, it's, if you, your Algebra 1 teacher did not teach you the box method, it's like doing a Punnett square from biology when you had the genes and the chromosomes. So I'm gonna start by putting three and two X up here, and then two, and 4x down here. Again, if any of these had a negative sign, you would have to carry the negative down here as well. So now all I'm gonna do is multiply whatever goes to each box. So two and three go to this box, which would give me six, okay? Two and 2x go to this box, which is 4x. 4x and three go to this box, which is 12x. 4x and 2x go to this box, which would give me 8x squared. All right. So now I just write everything out. Six plus four X plus 12 X plus eight X squared. So last step I'll need to do now would be combine like terms. Cause I have four X and 12 X. They have the same variable, the same exponent, which is again, if there's no exponent. It's like there's a one up there. Okay. 
So I combine those and get 16x. So I multiply these and I get six plus 16x plus eight x squared. Again, under normal circumstances, the eight x squared would be in the front, the six would be at the end, but we're keeping it like this so it looks similar to the complex numbers. So it looks similar to the next problem I'm about to show you. Again, you can pause it right here to make sure that you got this down. All right, so our last problem, we are still multiplying, but again, now we've just changed the X's to I's. So we got to add on two extra steps at the end, but everything else stays the same. So I'm going to do my box again. I'm going to put three and two I up here, two and four I down there. I'm going to fill in my boxes. Again, three times two is six, two times two I, four I. 4i times 3, 12i, 4i times 2i, 8i squared. 6 plus 4i plus 12i plus 8i squared. I'm again going to combine like terms. Okay, so 6 plus 16i. Now here's where my two extra steps come in. The first applies to my 8i squared. If you remember what we learned previously, i squared is equal it's a negative one. So anytime I see I squared going forward, I'm gonna to have to substitute it, okay? The next thing to remember is with the eight I squared, all right? When I have eight I squared, let's think about what it's representing. Is that representing eight plus I squared or eight times I squared? Well, it's the same as if I had eight X squared, okay? It's the same idea. So this is the coefficient out in front so it's not eight plus I squared, it's eight times I squared, okay? So what we're gonna do is over here we got, you can keep the plus sign on to eight if you really want to, but I've got eight times I squared. I'm gonna replace I squared with negative one because of up here. So now we've got eight times negative one, which is negative eight. So positive eight I squared turns into negative eight. Again, the shortcut, that's the shortcut if you can remember it. If you have an I squared on anything, you're just gonna change the sign on front and then just cut off the I squared because the I squared is why we changed it. So now I've got six plus 16I minus eight. Six plus 16I minus eight, this is the second part. I've got like terms again, okay? This is the second extra step. I now have six minus eight, I have like terms again. So that would give me negative two plus 16i, which is my final answer. Whenever I multiply two complex numbers, I should still get a complex number as my answer. If you have an i squared and what you think is your final answer, or for some other reason, it doesn't look like a complex number, you did something wrong. All right, so that will wrap this up. Again, you can always send me a question on your mind if you have them. Hopefully this will help you out to finish your homework. So I hope this help everybody, helps everybody out. Until next time, this is Coach Sharf, and I'll see y'all.